exercise for backcountry skiing. Now, my recommendations vary entirely based upon your skill level, both within skiing and backcountry skiing specifically. So first, we'll just start with beginners. Beginners in backcountry skiing generally just have poor cardio. So this is one of the few times that you're gonna hear me recommend consistent cardio. Um, now, they also lack a lot of other things, but if you can't get to the top of the hill, then you can't ski and you can't progress and then you can't focus on the main event, which is the downhill. Um, so beginners, simple, consistent cardio, at least three times a week, 30 minutes to an hour, you know, bike, jog, uh, lower weight, uh, kettlebell swings, high repetition, hike, any of these things uh, is going to have a excellent effect um, for just being able to get to the top of the ski run. Um, intermediates have different needs. So an intermediate backcountry ski tour um, I'm going to say doesn't have problems getting to the top. They can do 5 to 10k a day and that's not the issue. Um, the issue is that they don't really ski aggressively. Um, you kind of get into this lull where you can put out vert and that's not an issue um, and you just get down the hill. And these are, you know, the people that flex on Strava um, and all these other things where vert becomes the obsession, not skiing. Um, and then they ski poorly, uh, but they don't care because they care more about the numbers they put up on Strava rather than the downhill experience. Now these people, they don't need cardio and you see them all the time. You know, they think that they need cardio, but in reality, if you're looking at this person objectively, um, I just like to use the analogy of, of glasses and how full they are. Okay, this person is is 80 to 90% full glass of cardio, okay? So when they train cardio outside of ski touring, they're only going to get, you know, a few percentage points here and there because they're already nearly tapped out. They're already proficient. The gains that you could see there are quite minimal. Um, these intermediates, what they should be focusing on is strength. Okay, there are tons and tons of ski tours that have amazing cardio, um, but they can't even do, you know, a one and a half to two time body weight deadlift. They can't even squat their body weight as the grass. Um, they can't overhead press anything. Um, and so in the realm of strength and power, their glass isn't even a quarter full. So when it comes to, you know, cost benefit time analysis and what is to be gained by doing what, on your off days, when you know that you could just off the couch do, you know, five to 10K of, of gain, yeah, it might be painful. Efficiency comes, you know, over time. So I'm not discussing that efficiency can be gained. But the thing is, is that when you're a well-trained athlete, you regain that efficiency quickly. It's the first time that you get that level of efficiency that is a difficult time. So for you to, you know, re-get back to a previous season's efficiency of cardio is no problem. Now, what you should be doing is getting strong because doing something for the first time, it has two effects. Um, well, not two effects. The main effect is that you're going to see much larger overall progress because you're tapping into something that you've never done before. So when you do it, it's going to have a much larger stimulus, which is going to have a lot larger effects on your skiing. <clears throat> the catch is, is that you haven't done it before, so it does tax you a little more and it requires more time and effort. Um, but you know, that's how you get good. So intermediate ski tours need to stop doing more cardio on their days off and start getting strong. Do a simple five by five back squat or deadlift program. Do heavy kettlebell swings, okay? I mean, there are multiple things that you could do, but they all should be things that either focus on strength, strength endurance, power, and durability, okay? All these people that blow their knees, 
skiing isn't because of a lack of cardio. It's because of a lack of knee stability, because of a lack of strength, okay? They hit manky snow at the end of the day and their legs are already blown because they have no muscular reserve because they've blown their load going uphill. Um, you know, they could have skied that same run at the beginning of the day and it wouldn't have been a problem. What people don't understand about strength training is that, think of it this way. If, you know, I'm doing, ski touring is, you know, 10,000 reps of, you know, a quarter single leg step up. And then it's followed by, you know, some isometric contraction that just lasts for a couple minutes tops. Um, and there are pow power elements, balance and, and other things in there, but you have two totally conflicting demands. You have a large cardio vascular event followed by an extreme isometric strength and power event that lasts for a very short period of time. Um, now, when you're programming for these things, what I don't think people realize is that if you are very weak from a strength and power perspective and you do that, you know, minute, two minute long run, but you're already proficient in cardio, that is going to tax your body more than the vertical you did that day. I know that's hard for some people to understand, but it's true. Like I always said when I was schemo racing that the brief periods of down hurt way more than the uphill. Um, so anyway, strength does have huge gains. I remember uh, listening to a story of a uh, guy that held the record for running around the entire world. He ran across every single continent, you know, pushing a stroller. I forget how much it weighed, but you know, dude runs thousands of miles in all sorts of terrain, you know, self-supported with us pushing a stroller with everything that he needed. And his training was not um, really focused like you would think it would be um, because he was intelligent and that's why he set a record. His training was very similar to standard marathon and ultra marathon training, you know, kind of filler days during the week. And then, you know, maybe you got back to back long runs on the weekends and that's it. Um, but what he did that was unique amongst the endurance community was that during this time period, the only other thing he added was deadlifting. And his goal was to double his deadlift. Um, so keeping all other training aside and adding in a strength exercise, both increased his, his bone density, overall strength, durability, enough that he was able to compete, uh, you know, compete at the highest level and set a new record for an extreme endurance challenge by training strength. Okay. Uh, I remember reading an anecdote about climbing um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I don't even, I'm not going to pretend to remember the guy's name, but someone asked him, you know, what's, what's more important, you know, strength or endurance. And he said, if you don't have enough strength to hold on to the single hold, then what is there to endure? And it's kind of the same perspective. If you blow your load going uphill, that you ski like shit going down, like what is the point? So get strong. Another way to look at it is this. Okay, say all other variables are the same. Your cardiovascular fitness, um, you know, is a constant in this scenario. Every single step of a ski tour is a repetition, okay? And it is a repetition percentage of, you know, of essentially a body weight with some light load movement. So let's think of it this way. If your max single leg, you know, quarter squat step up is, let's say it's body weight um, in addition to load. You know, so, so it's like, okay, my max single leg step up is my body weight, you know, 190 pounds and then 190 pounds on a bar that I'm stepping up with. If I increase that to double per se, then when I am doing a unweighted quarter leg step up, now the efficiency gain is significant. I'm not going to do the math. It, you know, it's like a quarter 
of of the effort instead of using you know 50 percent of of my max per each step now i'm using 25 percent of each step this is huge and this is what um cardio endurance people don't understand okay strength and endurance are related and you can gain endurance by training strength. There you have it.